you might recall from uh, in your real analysis course, the construction of the uh, Lebesgue integral, wherein in order to, to define the Lebesgue integral of a function, first, that function must be measurable. In the previous uh, lectures, we have defined the lebesgue bockmer integral of a function from one uh, set to another uh, set, but we have not talked about measurability yet. So in this lecture, we aim to connect the two uh, concepts, measurability and integrability. So to start, let us consider two measurable spaces, x sigma and y tau. So by this, we mean that sigma here is a sigma algebra on x and tau here is a sigma algebra on y. And by a sigma algebra, we mean an algebra that is close under countable unions. And hence by de Morgan's law, uh, they are also close under countable intersections. Then a function from x to y, say f, is said to be sigma tau measurable. So here we need to emphasize the sigma algebras on the sets, one for the domain and one for the codomain. So we have measurability if for any u, a measurable subset of y, meaning it's in the sigma algebra tau, the inverse image is measurable in x. That is, it is in the sigma algebra sigma. So this is analogous to the, continu uh, the definition of continuous functions on topological spaces. So for measurable functions, uh, the inverse image of measurable sets is also measurable. Elements of the sigma algebra will be called measurable sets. Okay. Now, suppose we have an additional structure on the codomain. More specifically, suppose that Y is a topological space with a topology T. Then there is what we call the Borel sigma algebra. on y denoted by script, uh, script b of y. So this is the sigma algebra generated by the topology. So this is the intersection of all sigma algebras containing the topology. So in other words, this is the smallest sigma algebra containing all open sets. Then one can show that uh, this is measurable. More precisely, sigma, what else sets of y measurable if and only if the inverse image of open sets are measurable. Okay, so instead of verifying or looking at the inverse images of all measurable sets or all Borel sets in Y, it is enough to verify uh, 
measurability of the inverse images with respect to all open sets. So I leave this as an exercise for you to verify. Okay, now what if the topological space is induced by a metric? Or uh, I should say, what if we have a measure on the uh, set X? We'll talk about uh, the case of metric spaces later. So first, suppose that I have here, a complete measure space. Okay, by this uh, we mean that X is a set, sigma is a sigma algebra on X and mu is a pre-measure on the sigma algebra. So a measure is nothing but a pre-measure on a sigma algebra. And there is the concept of, uh, or there's a process of completing measure spaces. So in a measure theory, uh, one can complete a measure space by roughly uh, uh, combining uh, or including all uh, null sets, that is sets having outer measure zero. So in this uh, course, all uh, measure spaces will be considered or assumed to be complete, hence we ignore or we uh, sometimes uh, do not emphasize the word complete anymore. So here we now have a measure on the uh, measurable space X sigma. And we have a topology on Y. So this pair is now a topological space. Then we say that a function f from x to y to be uh, mu is strongly measurable if, okay, the first one, if it is measurable with respect to the sigma algebra in X and with respect to the Borel sigma algebra in Y. So that is, if F is measurable with respect to this uh, sigma algebras and it is uh, almost separably value. By this, we mean that there is some null set, so n on the sigma algebra having measure zero, such that the image of F, except uh, this null set N, is separable. Meaning we have a countable dense subset of this image set. And uh, here, uh, the closure should be taken with respect to the subspace topology of this uh, set with respect to the topology on Y. You might wonder at uh, the term uh, strong. Uh, this is to uh, differentiate with another concept of measurability called weak measurability. And we will discuss weak topologies in the future lectures. So for now, accept uh, this terminology because there is another um, concept of measurability called weak measurability.
Okay. So let us discuss some properties of strongly measurable functions. Now, suppose that I have a metric space. And let us emphasize the metric, D sub y. I have a Banach space, Z. And I have a complete measure space x sigma mu. As we said, we do not emphasize the term complete. Okay, then if I have a function f from x to y, and this is mu strongly measurable, and a function, let's say phi from y to z, from the metric space to the Banach space, then if we take the composition of phi and f, which is a map from x to z. This is also strongly measurable. Now, what is phi? Uh, phi is a continuous. So the composition of strongly measurable of a strongly measurable function and a continuous function is again strongly measurable. Okay, so let us look at the proof of this theorem. So suppose uh, u is open in z, then by continuity of phi the inverse image of phi or the inverse image of u under phi is open in y. Okay. Therefore, taking the inverse image of the composition of this set u, which is by definition f inverse of a phi inverse view. Now, take note that this is an element of the metric topology, dy. Since f is measurable, then So we need to emphasize measurability. So it is measurable with respect to uh, these sigma algebras, or we should say uh, the Borel sigma algebra y. And this is the sigma algebra generated by the metric topology. So by measurability of f, this implies that this must be in sigma. Okay. So therefore, F or the composition is measurable with respect to the following sigma algebra. So sigma and B of Z. This is the Borel sets in Z, which is the sigma algebra uh, generated by the metric in Z. So 
So DZ here is the metric induced by the norm in Z. Take note that Z is a Banach space. Okay. So that's the first uh, criterion, measurability of uh, the composition with respect to these uh, sigma algebras. One, uh, the sigma algebra on X, which is sigma. The other one, the Borel sets on Z. That is the sigma algebra generated by the metric topology on the Banach space Z. Okay, for the second part, uh, first, let us take an N uh, in the sigma algebra such that uh, the measure of N is zero. And this image, and we denote this by Y tilde, for simplicity, uh, simplicity is separable. Uh, the existence of an N having measure zero and this in sigma is guaranteed from the fact that F is a measurable or strongly measurable. So the claim is that this is also the null set for which uh, the image of the composition is uh, separable. Okay, so this is phi of y tilde. Okay, so let's start. So let D be countable with closure, which is Y tilde. Here uh, we use Y tilde because it is a subset of Y. The image of F is a subset of Y. The existence of a countable uh, a set D having closure, uh, which is Y tilde, comes from the fact that Y tilde is separable. Then, uh, the image of phi of D is also countable. And if we take the image of Y tilde, this is equal to phi uh, of the closure of D. Okay, so we would like to emphasize here that closure is taken with respect to the subspace topology of Y tilde as a subset of the topological space Y. Okay, so if you have a topology in Y, if you have a subset of Y, then you can assign the subspace topology. Okay, now using the fact that phi is continuous, the image of the closure is the closure of the image. And here you can uh, consult uh, any uh, good reference on a topology. For instance, uh, you could look at the book of uh, Munkres uh, topology. Since uh, the image is a subset of uh, phi y tilde, then this must be the same as phi y tilde because the closure is taken uh, with respect to uh, the uh, subspace topology. 
Okay, there are two closures here that I would like to emphasize. Uh, the first one, okay, and second one would be uh, the closure with respect to the subspace topology of Y tilde. Okay, so if uh, that would be the uh, topological space, the closure would be uh, uh, this set here. Okay. Hence, we have a countable dense subset of phi y tilde. In other words, phi y tilde is separable, hence is also separable. Therefore, the composition of f and phi is almost separably valued. Okay, for uh, due to the limited time that we have, let me summarize other results without proofs regarding uh, measurability of functions. So the first one, again, let's start with a measure space, x sigma mu. and uh, a metric space Y. Let us emphasize the metric, say D. If I have a sequence of strongly measurable functions, F sub N from X to Y, for all n, for every n positive integer, and I have convergence almost everywhere for some uh, function f from x to y, then the limit is also strongly measurable. So again, if you have a sequence of strongly measurable functions from one me from a measure space into a metric space, and uh, you have convergence almost everywhere, then the limit is also strongly measurable. Okay, let us denote by m of x sigma mu with values in the metric space y, uh, the set of uh, mu is strongly measurable functions. m for measurability. Then, this is, in fact, can be made into a complete metric space. Of course, uh, we need the assumption that Y is complete. But what is the uh, metric? So with respect to the following metric, 
So let us denote the me uh, metric by d mu. So the metric, so the distance between two strongly measurable functions is the infimum of all positive number r, wherein the distance, or I should say the measure of the set where the distance between these two functions is greater than r is at most uh, r. So here d is the metric with respect uh, to the uh, space y. Okay. Since uh, simple functions are strongly measurable, and uh, Lebesgue-Bochner integra Le integrable functions are limits of simple functions. This implies that Lebesgue-Bochner integrable functions are measurable as well. In other words, we have so the set of simple functions from this uh, measure space. with values in the complete metric space Y are Lebesgue-Bochner integrable. And they are also measurable, strongly measurable to be precise. The uh, succeeding theorems that we will uh, present are similar to the usual uh, Lebesgue integration uh, theory. And let me state them, as I said, without proof. And you could uh, consult the proof in the book of ALT, uh, for example. So the first is the Lebesgue theorem. So if I have a measure space x sigma mu complete measure space a Banach space y then uh, and also a function f from x to y If f is strongly measurable with values in y and this is dominated by a function g, in other words, the norm of f is less than uh, g, you almost everywhere for some integrable uh, g with values in r, then uh, f is not only strongly measurable, but it is also Lebesgue-Bochner integrable. Okay, so if function, if a measurable function is dominated by uh, its norm is dominated by a Lebesgue-Bochner integrable function, then the function itself is also Lebesgue-Bochner integrable. And another useful theorem is Bochner's theorem. When can we say uh, that uh, a function is Lebesgue uh, integrable, Lebesgue-Bochner integrable? Okay, so the same assumption as with the Lebesgue theorem. I have a measure space. I have a Banach space, Y. Then F is Lebesgue-Bochner integrable with respect to this measure space with values in the Banach space, Y. If and only if the following two conditions are satisfied. First, 
it should be measurable. And the second one, if the norm is Lebesgue Bochner integrable or Lebesgue integrable in this case because uh, it is uh, real valued. The norm of F is now a real value. So one can uh, notice that Lebesgue theorem is a special case of uh, Bochner's theorem where one can use this direction. So if F is measurable, and you take G to be uh, just the norm of F, which is a Lebesgue integrable, then this implies that uh, F is Lebesgue Bochner integrable. So Lebesgue theorem is a, spe a special case or a corollary to Bochner's uh, theorem. Another uh, theorem. And this is uh, one of the famous one in this theory of integration. So this is the Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem, or sometimes uh, referred as the simply referred uh, refer to as the dominated convergence theorem. So again, we have a measure space x sigma mu and a Banach space y. If I have a sequence of strongly measurable functions, fn and f, and a sequence of Lebesgue integrable functions, gn and g, for all n again, and uh, gn converges to g in uh, the space of uh, Lebesgue integrable functions if this f sub n's, the norms of the f sub n's are dominated by the g sub n's and f sub n converges to f mu almost everywhere, then the sequence f sub n as well as f, they are not only measurable, but they are also the beg Bochner integrable for all n of course and the convergence uh, almost everywhere can be uh, extended to convergence with respect to the space of the beg Bochner integrable functions. Okay, so again, what uh, does the Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem tells us? If you have a sequence of uh, functions uh, f sub n, okay, and this f sub n converges to f pointwise almost everywhere, this sequence f sub n has a norm bound less than or equal to g sub n, where g sub n is a sequence of uh, Lebesgue uh, integrable functions having a limit in that space, which we denoted by g, then these functions are not only measurable, but they are also integrable. And from pointwise convergence. Here, we can extend that to the convergence in the space of uh, Lebesgue-Bochner integrable functions. 
Okay, uh, the usual Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem is stated where uh, Gn is a fixed uh, or a constant sequence of uh, Lebesgue uh, integrable functions. That is, you can take Gn to be G. But this is a more general uh, statement. Other convergence theorems that you might be familiar with. Okay. What if we have a monotone uh, sequence? So we have the following monotone convergence uh, theorem. So suppose we have a sequence of real valued Lebesgue integrable functions. Here we need uh, the fact that uh, they are real valued so that we could compare uh, the uh, which uh, one is less than the other. Okay, In particular, suppose that this sequence is increasing almost everywhere. So the uh, function having a larger index is greater than or equal to the function having a smaller index, almost everywhere. And I have, uh, let's say, Convergence mu almost everywhere. And the sequence of integrals. Okay. So if you take the limit superior, say, as n goes to infinity, is bounded. Then, so if you have an increasing sequence of uh, integrable functions, having a bounded sequence of integrals, then the limit is also integrable and we can extend the convergence point twice, almost everywhere, to convergence in the space, or Banach space of Lebesgue integrable functions. Okay, so the proof of this is uh, similar to uh, the one in uh, real analysis. Sacrificing, let's say, uh, monotonicity, uh, monotonicity we have a weaker result as usual. And this is a fatus dilemma. Again, Suppose that we have a sequence of uh, integrable functions that are non-negative almost everywhere. So here we do not assume that uh, this sequence is increasing. However, let us suppose that at the limit inferior is finite. The limit inferior of the uh, integrals uh, is finite. Then, uh, the limit inferior of these functions is uh, integrable and the integral of this uh, limit inferior over x is less than or equal to the limit inferior okay this is sometimes called uh, the uh, lower semi continuity of the integral for uh, non-negative uh, measurable uh, functions or non-negative integrable functions. So if you want to pull out the limit inferior, then uh, you have possibly a larger uh, integral. 
Okay, so this cannot be improved in general to an equation. Okay. In, in fact, there are examples wherein you have you can have a strict inequality. Okay. Finally, the following theorem deals with uh, changing the order of iterated integrals. So what if we have a double integral? Can we interchange the order of uh, integration? So that is the content of the uh, Fubini uh, Tonelli theorem. So for uh, the assumptions, let us consider two complete measure spaces x sigma mu and y tau nu. So these are complete measure spaces. A function f from the Cartesian product x cos y to r. So let us uh, restrict ourselves in the case of uh, real valued functions. Now, if f is Lebesgue integrable over the product space, of course, here one has to consider uh, the uh, what uh, the product of the sigma algebras and the product of the measures. Here, uh, this is the same. That's the sigma algebra generated by the Cartesian product of the two sigma algebras. So this is the smallest sigma algebra containing the Cartesian product of the two sigma algebras. And this product measure here is the unique measure on this product sigma algebra such that the product measure of say A cross B is the same as the product of the co uh, corresponding measures. So that's mu of A times mu of B uh, for any A in sigma and B in T or tau. So that's for any A cross B in sigma cross tau. So here again, F is the Lebesgue Bochner integrable function on the product measure space. If this is the case, then one. So as a function of y for a fixed x, this is Lebesgue integrable with respect to y. And uh, if this is valid for mu almost every x in the domain, and as well as the, okay? So we can treat uh, this integral as a function of x. So we are integrating with respect to the variable y. So to emphasize that one, let us put an argument on the measure. This is also integrable over the set x. So that's the first one. Analogously, for uh, new almost every y, in the set capital Y. This, as a function of X, is Lebesgue integrable over X with respect to the measure mu. And as a function of Y, this integral over X 
with respect to the mesh or mu, with respect to the variable integration small x, is uh, the bag integrable over y with respect to the mesh or mu. Okay, so in other words, the uh, sections of your function are the bag integrable uh, with respect to either x or y. So since these are the bag integrable, we can take uh, the integral of those functions. So furthermore, if I take the integral, so looking at this, if you take the integral over x of the integral, so the integral over x of the integral over y of f, now ignoring the arguments x, small x and small y, so this should be d nu, d mu. This is the same as the integral over y of the integral over x of the function, the inner integral with respect to mu, the outer integral with respect to u. And in fact, this is the same as the integral of f with respect to the product measure over the product space x cross y. Well, uh, this in integral exists uh, according to this assumption here. Okay, so in other words, uh, the double integral over x cross y can be written as an iterated integral. And this equation here tells us that the order of integration is immaterial. So this is, in fact, uh, the statement of uh, the Fubini uh, theorem. Uh, for the case of the Tonelli uh, theorem, if the measure space are sigma finite, Okay, what do you mean by a sigma finite and measure space? Uh, that is, we could find a countable sequence of elements in the sigma algebra uh, so there exists a sequence having finite measure. and x is the union of this countable sequence. Okay, so a sigma finite uh, measure space means that uh, the whole space can be partitioned or can be divided into a countable union of measurable sets having a finite measure. And of course you can adapt this or the space y, okay? And I leave the details to you. Okay, so if these uh, measure spaces are sigma finite, if f is measurable with respect to the product space, okay? And uh, let's assume that this is real value and let us emphasize the sigma algebra. So if this is measurable and either one or two holds. So if either one or two holds uh, with F, so there's a catch with the function f replaced by 
the absolute value. Then this equation here, let's call this uh, star. That is the equation uh, for uh, writing the double integral as uh, an iterated integral. Then the conclusion star also holds. Okay. So for sigma uh, 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 finite measure spaces, okay, if you only have measurability, okay, and either one or two is satisfied, then uh, this implies that uh, this equation here is also valid. Okay, and in particular, if the integrals are of, uh, in particular, this implies that f is uh, integrable. Okay, so in particular, f would be integrable. Because uh, if either one or two uh, is satisfied, then either this quantity here is finite or this is finite, hence this will be also finite. Okay. And that's the statement of the fobini tonelli theorem for uh, writing a double integral with respect to the product measure as an iterated integrals. And here the order of integration does not matter. You can integrate first with respect to mu and then take the integral with respect to mu. And the result will be the same if we change the order of integration. So that's it for uh, Lebesgue-Bochner integrable functions. In the next lecture, we will discuss Lebesgue spaces. See you then.